So now I want to introduce a new way of looking at the force of interest. So let's just recall that 1 plus i is equal to e to the power of delta. So for our interest rate scheme, we're giving a constant effective rate of interest. We can express, we can relate delta with i using this formula. So I also want to bring up the definition of e itself. e is equal to limit n tends to infinity for this expression, right? So using this definition, we can actually rewrite e to the power of delta as limit n tends to infinity for 1 plus delta over n to the power of n. And why is this term equal to this one? So we can actually show it using this uh, by rearranging a bit of the terms. So we can bring the delta down to the denominator. So we can put a delta down here and then raise the whole thing by delta. So when n tends to infinity, n over delta tends to infinity as well. So this whole term inside the bracket, uh, inside the big bracket, is going to be equal to e. So this whole expression is going to be equal to e to the power of delta. And so there we have it. Now we've shown that this term is actually equivalent to this term. And if you observe this expression inside, this reminds you of something, right? This is, this is actually similar to the formula for the nominal rate of interest. So what does this suggest? This suggests that delta is actually the nominal rate of interest, but it's a nominal rate for a special case where uh, the compounding is done uh, continuously. It's done at every single uh, infinitesimal slice of the second. So it's done continuously. So another way to kind of like uh, to show that this show this relationship is to analyze this term. So what if, from what we've observed just now, we would expect this to be equal to delta, right? So how do we show this? So first, let's come up with a formula for this term. So let's just start with the basic definition. This is equal to 1 plus i. So we can just rearrange a bit of the terms, and then we'll get, we'll get something like this. So. Uh, we can rewrite this limit as this. And gonna, we're going to do a bit of rearranging. Now you see that as m tends to infinity, this term tends to 0. This term tends to 0. So this essentially we have a 0 over 0 limit. So uh, one way we can solve this is to use L'Hopital's rule. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and avoid that and just uh, do it the sort of generic way. So first I'm going to rewrite the limit as n tends to 0. And I'm not going to use 1 over m, I'm going to use n. And also for now I'm going to write 1 plus i as e to the power of delta. So this is equal to e to the power of delta n minus 1. And I don't know if you've heard of this before, but uh, this limit is actually equal to 1. So this is, uh, I, I think they teach this in high school if you've taken calculus, but if you want to prove this, you can either use a L'Hopital's rule, or uh, you can take the natural logarithm and do a bit of uh, rearranging, and eventually you'll get this. So we're going to just go ahead and use this result. So we can actually, for this term, we can multiply the whole thing by delta over delta. So if you notice the terms inside the bracket, as n tends to 0, delta n tends to 0. So this limit inside the bracket, this limit, is actually going to be equal to 1 according to this. So we get 1 times delta, which is equal to delta. So there we have it. We've proved that limit m tends to infinity of i m is actually equal to delta. And so this sort of confirms the way that we can actually interpret delta as the nominal rate of interest. Only except it's a nominal interest rate of interest where the compounding is done continuously. So I hope this sheds a bit of light on what exactly the force of interest is and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.